few weeks ago, I was happily sulking by my swimming pool. Who do you want? I just came by to see if there's something I can help you with. I'm retired. My psychotic best friend shows up out of nowhere. Nobody tells me what I want! To torture me over mistakes I made over a decade ago. So you're back in the game? I guess. Yes! Woo! Welcome back, man! Who knew you'd be able to create movies within a realistic, thriving virtual world full of so many aspects to drive variety within various possible stories? Nobody, and that's why to me Grand Theft Auto V is amazing. Today, a lot of AAA games try to bring new things to the table, and some really set new bars for what's to come from your favorite developers. But this game really changed up the formula. It's one of the only games to me at the time that really felt like it was alive and had a lot of depth to its world and characters. The depth this game had really proved it was the closest game to having a real world full of population, so that's why many people have taken the opportunity to tell their own stories within its virtual walls. It makes sense why it's the most financial piece of entertainment history, and why it's still bought full price. The community is what continues the life cycle of this game, since in my opinion they corrupted their own online a long time ago. Go to Twitch and all GT5 is, is roleplaying, whether it's for memes or taken seriously like most people do. It proved its world is perfect for entertaining an audience, and with the addition of Rockstar Editor, it opened its doors for a lot of people. Someone like YouTuber Dougie who was offered a job by Rockstar for his skills in creating fun cinematic skits. It's amazing, and today that's why I'm going to give you the basics of how to create a cinematic story in Grand Theft Auto V. For those that already know my channel, you knew I was a Dying Light role player and attempted my own methods of creating a cinematic story in Dying Light as well. Looking at what Rockstar gives you with its Rockstar Editor mode, it still isn't a piece of cake like you may think. If anything, I still think it's easier to create stories in Dying Light just because of the complexity of the Rockstar Editor system. But if you don't let that hold you back and you practice, I'm sure you'll get the hang of it over time. It took me two years to perfect it, just go into it knowing it's going to take some time getting used to. I'm going to split this video up into parts so I can focus specifically on certain methods that can push your content into the spotlight. If I miss anything you want me to cover then make sure to let me know in the comments below. Part 1 of this video is going to focus on the pre-production stages of your project. What I do before getting too far into the production stages of producing a film is I predetermine what the tone is going to be of the story. The tone is really something you don't want to overlook because a simple tone change can really disengage your audience if not established properly. By establishing a tone, I mean by always following by what you're trying to tell. Like, do you want your audience to feel something personal? Is there a message to your story? Focus your story on the things you're trying to convey most. Basically, just don't overcomplicate things. After you've established the focus point of your story, you then can carry on to who, where, when, why, and how. Sorry if this is turning in the 10th grade English class, but these are things I find are required to set up for a film to have a safe and steady start to your project. A lot of times people get carried away with where they want to take their story next, but it makes more sense just to focus on the beginning stages of your project at first. And once it's flushed out, then you begin finding locations and begin running in character arcs and where you want to take them. Locations can vary anywhere in the world, and since GTA has a great variety of locations, it wouldn't be hard too hard to establish a certain part of the map to your story. You can really bring anyone into any scene because of the character creation in online which would help simply when producing a film with a couple online buddies. Anyone can be anyone in your story. Of course, you have to establish things like the when, how, and why. Depending on the story you're trying to tell, the when shouldn't really matter too much to your story unless it conveys to the plot. When the plans in online started to have more variety for each update, I attempted to create a World War II film. The time period was very different from what's established already in Los Santos, so use the world to your advantage and make it look like it was in that time period. Buy certain old looking clothes and old looking cars. I love telling those kinds of stories and I find that going out of your way to make the world yours really engages the audience into the story. That's if the time period is significantly different of course, but once you get to the how stages of production, that's where you develop your characters and delve into what your story is about. Are you trying to tell a heist story, a slasher flick, a post-apocalyptic thriller? Take some time and watch some films from other YouTubers and see how they engage you into their premise. It's not bad to be inspired. 
Everyone has their methods and a lot of them are different. You just gotta keep a focus point on your story and never drift away from what made your story yours. You're allowed to tell your story however you want to tell it, and every time you learn new ways of storytelling that maybe would have worked in a past project. Keep that thought in mind and keep practicing. The more projects you attempt, the more experience you'll gain. There's more online communities of people needing help with their films. Simple enough, reach out and help them. That's how I've met the people I've worked with over the years. Reaching out your comfort zone and attempting something maybe you've never thought of has really helped me gain the most knowledge. You just want to make sure not to attempt too much. Like a focus on one project of your own that help other people is like a side project. And most likely they'll probably help you back if it all works out. Don't be too afraid to go into the community and ask people to help. Maybe you need a certain location left behind millions of in-game currency. Find the right person that has already bought it. I'm sure they'll let you use it. Of course this goes along with outfits, vehicles, and really anything else in the game. Even reaching out and asking for people to play a character for a couple minutes, you just gotta know where to look. I'll cover where I found my voice factors near the end of probably the third video I'd assume. Maybe when working with someone random they critique your project and give you new ideas on how to improve. Criticism is the best thing that can come out of each project, even if it's getting you nowhere. Feedback has always helped me make every new project a step higher than before. When planning out your story, be realistic with the options you already have. This goes back to not overcomplicating things, because sometimes when people do so, they attempt things that aren't possible to attempt in GTA. For example, if you wanted your character to be in a certain fighting animation, it really isn't going to work as well as you want it to. But that's where mobs come in. I've worked with mods before and they really are a treat. I say that producing a GTA film and without mods are completely different experiences when it comes to the production stages. Mods you don't have to worry about barriers and you're so much more open to the opportunities of what you can convey in your story. Anything you can have happen with mods, and a lot of the bigger GTA film channels use them. Many though, this video is focusing on the production stages without mods. Until we get to the production stages, of course. Just know they're there, and once you have the right PC, the next step would be to attempt those. They're pretty interesting. After you have a basic outline of the setting, characters, and what's going to take place, you then can move into the script writing stages. Not everyone is a professional, of course, so it'll take some time getting used to a script writing format. There's many apps out there like Celtics that automatically formats everything for you, and if you need even more help, go online and look up forums or videos on how to write a script. That's how I got started. I'm not going to spend too much time on writing because that's not really my area of expertise. When you're at a point in your project where you have an outline, basically where you're starting to wrap up the story in your scripting stages and you really need to get on to the next step of finally producing the project, well first, I want to talk to you about something else. In the film industry, they do something called storyboarding. Basically, it's a graphic representation of how your story will unfold. For Frogstar Editor, there's more freedom due to a feature called FreeCam, where in an area surrounding your character, the shot you're trying to convey can be placed anywhere. With mods, you can add things on to where your camera can go anywhere, of course. So you don't need to worry about shot compositions like in real filmmaking. Real filmmakers do this because when they arrive at a set to begin shooting, they are required to know where the shot is already going to take place and what's going to occur. For the set they use costs money and time, and those things of course aren't unlimited. In GTA, you can just save the file and go back to it whenever you want. And once you reach the production stages, that's usually where things go wrong. Attempting to create a realistic film with the body motions of a video game character doesn't always work to your advantage. Of course mods can attempt to fix that, but not everyone is the hardware required to run GTA on a computer. This is where I'm going to end off the video for today. I hope you guys are interested in the methods I try to display. I worked pretty hard on this video and all the support would be appreciated. With Dying Light 2 releasing next year, I hope to entertain everyone that has been following me across this journey. It takes a lot of work to create these videos, but I really should be uploading more anyways. I just really haven't found my place in any communities recently, so I've been taking a step back. But I've always been fond of commentary channels, rather it was about the media, upcoming games, or even drama. They always find some way to engage me, and I decided I'd try to give it a shot. I enjoy this content, so expect more of it to come. Of course, unless everyone hates it.
How's everything going? I think the government's catching on to us. The explosion got too many eyes. I had to get out of that building as quickly as I could. Shit, how many casualties? Too many. They were all trying to shut down part of the operation. Chase, this is going way too far. We gotta shut this down. No! I've tried every treatment, and no matter how hard I fucking try, there is no other way to save her. I didn't just want to help her, I wanted to help other people. And to finish my father's dream of curing cancer. Well, why do you have to do all that stupid shit like blow up the fucking lab? I had to! I just don't want to deal with the government and all that legal shit. We'll still work on it. We just have to start everything over. What's next? Wait it out, I guess. It only makes sense to spend every last second I have with her. <laughs> 